Hi everyone. How are you doing? I'm at the library. I haven't, I got a coveted right in front of the library spot. Uh, I haven't gone in yet because I wanted to talk to you about a book before I return it. And it's something I mentioned in one of my other videos. And that's Martyr by Kaveh Akbar. Kaveh Akbar is a poet and this is his first novel. I fell in love with the main character right from the get-go. That's how much of a character that Kaveh Akbar develops right from the start for me. His name is Cyrus Shams and he is someone who's uh, in college he might be out of college at the time that we meet him at the beginning. I'm saying that because there are the chapters travel back in time and then sometimes they travel a little bit forward in time and then present day. So I'm I'm not clear about whether he's out of college or not. But anyhow, Cyrus has been raised by his father what we learn very early in the book is that his mother has been tragically killed in a plane crash, a plane crash that was caused by the U.S. military shooting a plane down and everyone in the commercial flight perishing. I really enjoyed the format of this book where a chapter would be devoted to Cyrus and a part of his life and uh, a couple chapters are devoted to his mother and that really let you know where you were in the story are we going to hear a story from his mother when when uh, Cyrus's mother was young there's a couple chapters about um, that are his dad's story after his they learn that his mother has died there is a chapter devoted to the uncle and then there's a couple dream chapters that Cyrus has that um, I liked less but that's just me I, I don't think that's uh, any reflection of the book itself the interesting thing is then in in Cyrus's life his father dies just as he gets to college and he feels like his dad in his dad's grief and in his dad's raising of his son alone and striving to get Cyrus to college. If he feels like his dad hung on just long enough and had the will to get him to see him to college. So he becomes um, obsessed with the idea of martyrs and different types of martyrs. And he himself feels like he may see himself as a martyr one day because he wants his life to, and his more importantly his death to mean something because he feels like the untimely death of his mother on that commercial airline flight uh, was horrible and meaningless and then his dad just passing away and maybe not ever having lived his own life for himself is meaningless favorite part of the book is when Cyrus learns about this artist who's going to be in Brooklyn and she's doing this kind of living exhibit. She has art, I believe, exhibited in this Brooklyn Museum, but she's dying from cancer and she wants to spend some of her last weeks in conversation with people. Kind of like the the artist is present exhibit at MoMA that happened. Um, and there's a wonderful documentary about it. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the artist, but I've seen that documentary several times. I'm, it's so fascinating where she sat for eight or nine hours a day and just looked at people in their eyes one-on-one. -on -one. Well, this is the artist actually having conversations. And the cool thing about that is so, Cyrus, who's in, I think, the state of Indiana, travels to Brooklyn. And so the, the chapters there start to be titled Saturday, Cyrus Shams, Brooklyn, Day Two, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
or Arkide is the name of the artist who is sitting there and engaging with people. There is a fascinating turn or twist to this book that is the is an unexpected surprise. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed everything up to that point. I would have marked some passages in this book, but it's a library book, so I can't give you a sampling of his writing, but I'm sure other people will do that when they have this book in their hands and they'll mark some of his beautiful passages. Um, I think Nathan from Nathan's Nook has this book on his top reads of 2023. So go there. Uh, I'm sure he's got a beautiful review of it. Tommy Orange on the front says Kave Akbar is one of my favorite writers, period, ever, period. And yeah, Leslie Jameson is blurbed here, Lauren Groff. What's really cool is that at the end, in the um, acknowledgments, he says, Kave says, thank you, Tommy Orange, bandmate, maestro. This novel would not exist without your example on and off the page. Thank you, Lauren Groff, for seeing the thing I was trying to write beyond the thing I'd written and for saying so. And he thanks the reader. Reader, your attention, a measure of time, your most non-replenishable resource is a profound gift. One I have done my best to honor. Thank you, thank you. I'm not doing a good job explaining this. It's something, it's one of those books that it was for me more about feeling. I loved what he did with the plot, if you could call it that. I loved how I loved watching Cyrus go from uh, getting into some trouble and and being addicted to all kinds of substances, pulling himself out of that with his own will. In other words, like a will to live. I would be surprised if this wasn't one of my top reads for 2024. All right, and what else have I been reading? I finished two things. I actually brought them with me just because I wanted to talk uh, to you about them here. I finished another Anita Bruckner. I have to say, I've read, I don't know, four or five Anita Bruckners. This one is up there with uh, some of my favorites. I was surprised about that because at first I didn't think that's how it was going to be. Um, my favorite Anita Bruckner is Look at Me out of the ones that I've read. I really like Hotel de Lac. Look at Me is number one out of the ones that I've read so far. And this one says it was written in 1990. I don't know, but it's about Faye who comes across um, another married woman, Julia, um, in their early married lives. And this must be they must be married sometime in the 40s or 50s. It's very traditional, traditional roles. It's one of those gentle books with not much of a plot, very interior story about Faye. But then it sneakily becomes more complex and more nuanced because Faye in her life, as life goes on, becomes more complex and more nuanced. Her husband passes away eventually, but even her view of her marriage and the way that she thought it would be and the way that it actually was and, and how Anita Bruckner conveys that in her writing is excellently done. I really thought she was on her game there. And then her friendship with Joya and who's Joya? Joya could not be more opposite than Faye. And that was really fun to see the contrast and how you both are attracted to and somehow repelled from a person like that, somebody who has a big personality, takes up a lot of space, and also demands attention. And then how their lives completely change and how Faye ends up doing some pretty non-standard things in her life that she could have never seen herself doing. So she says about Julia early on, I always felt that somewhere in the remote fastness of her being, a long way behind the eyelids, and the ringed hand clutching a glass of whiskey. She was a girl, but a girl of a rather lost variety, dreaming, unawakened, incurious, almost pure. Two clues to this, her animation in the presence of her mother, both of them drinking whiskey, yet laughing together like schoolgirls, coupled with her devotion to her brother, who had let himself down in various ways, 
poor darling, deftly written. Her interior experience of her mother dying are just so gently and expertly done. Um, yeah, this is right up there. If you have a bunch of Bruckners and you haven't read all of them yet and you don't know which one to uh, get out of the pile, um, I would say Look at Me is amazing. I would read Hotel de Lac first just because like that's isn't that the Booker Prize winning story but for me Look at Me is a real ringer and then this one. Then I read this Barbara Taylor that I've had for a while in this beautiful Virago edition, Virago Modern Classics. It's called The Wedding Group. And it's a strange one. The only thing I've read of Elizabeth Taylor is the Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont. I'm going to have to remind myself <clears throat> the people's names here. Cressy grows up in, I'm going to call it a commune. It says it's an artistic community presided over by her eccentric grandfather, it's more of like it's kind of a religious commune it's got it's got its rules and its ways of very conservative living and you're supposed to not leave home and just live in the community and marry whoever they they want you to marry but she's a rebel she leaves she goes into the town which is right near the commune and she starts living her life her parents do not disown her thank god almost though and yeah, she starts living her life. She gets this scroungy top floor apartment like thing space from um, I think it's the owners of like an antique shop. And then she meets David, a self-satisfied journalist. And the rest of the story is odd what happens between Cressy and David. But what I really enjoyed about the story is the character of Cressy and how Elizabeth Taylor really paints a, a good picture of the commune as I'm calling it and Cressy and then everybody else in her orbit. It says first published in 1968 this quietly ironic exploration of the ways in which the parental mold is not easily broken is one of Elizabeth Taylor's most ambitious novels. It's it's hard to explain this one but I know Elizabeth Taylor just has a whole bunch of different types of stories she's written and I would say that if you have seen this one and you're wondering about it or if you own this that it is it is really well worth reading if you like just quirky characters I mean kind of like Lolly Willows in a way except um I'd say that there's more there's more of a love story there, the humanity of um, the people around her trying to help her um, is is just really in a really important part of this story. Then I just wanted to mention I had written on my whiteboard that one of the things that I would like to do is get back in touch with Iris Murdoch. See if I can find one of the books that I read in the early 90s or late 80s that I really liked of Iris Murdoch's and I have yet to find that book. I've looked at all the ones they have had on the shelves from time to time. I know that'll vary depending on books that get checked in. Um, I haven't really just looked at her entire oeuvre to see if I can recognize which ones I could have read because I have looked at some of them and they just aren't connecting with me, the descriptions. I did get this one out, uh, a fairly honorable defeat. And I can tell you, it's not one of the ones that I read and it just didn't, I, I read the back and then I read the first couple pages. It just didn't connect with me. So I'm still on the search, I'm still on it. So that's it. I don't really have anything up next. I'm in one of those places where could I possibly start The House of Mirth? I started reading it and, um, or by Edith Wharton, I should say. I started reading it. I don't know yet. I could get drawn in, but I'm feeling like I want to read like mid 20th century authors right now. So we'll see what I get myself into in there because I don't have any holds. And so I have a completely clean slate. I'll let you know what I get myself into. This is a very precarious setup. Hi there. I wanted to give you the end of the story, so to speak, because I didn't get to show you what I got out of the library. Oh gosh, this is crazy. Okay. I had a hole that came in. <sighs> I forgot about this one. I don't know if I will 
get to it. But it's um, Memoirs of a Dutiful Daughter, Simone de Beauvoir. I must have seen it talked about somewhere. It's an intimate picture of growing up in a bourgeois fam French family rebelling as an adolescent against the conventional expectations of her class. Young woman in the 1920s. So who knows? I may get to it. Then, oh, I have it over here. I did choose a Iris Murdoch. And since this is a couple days later, I've, I'm starting to try it out. But I still don't know. This is the Sacred and Profane Love Machine. It was written in the 70s. I am 60 pages in. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm, I, it's reminding me of what I loved about Iris Murdoch's writing. She packs so many words into one sentence. But they're all a delight to read. And I'm just feeling that Iris Murdoch style of telling a story, and I, I can't express it yet. But I, don't, I still don't know if this is, is right for me. So there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of names. I know this isn't one that I read. I can tell you that much, but I don't know. I don't know. Then the other hold that came in that I didn't realize is Prima Fasci. Prima Fossi. It's a book by Susie Miller that's based on a play, a very successful play by Susie Miller. And this has just been made into a novel. And she is a barrister in the UK. And it says that it's enthralling and sharp-witted, an unflinching, unflinching look inside a legal system that is more punishing to the victims of sexual assault than it is to the assailants. And this is about the main character's experience. And that's all I'll say. But because I just referenced the fact that this book is going to look at the justice system when it comes to sexual assaults, then please look at uh, trigger warnings for this book if, um, if that's something that you would normally do. Tessa Ensler is the barrister. and. I am just 23 pages in, and I'm liking it so far. I mean, it's early days. I, it says it received four Tony Award nominations and a win for Best Actress in 2023, and it won the 2023 Laurence Olivier Award for Best Play and Best Actress. So maybe some of you know this play and have even seen it. Okay, what else? Off the shelves... I decided to get the other Alfred Hayes book that I want to read this year. I read, I can't remember the name of the other book because it's uh, an unusual name. List it down below. But the, the other one, the one that Pato talked about as one of his favorite books was, is In Love by Alfred Hayes. And it, and the description sounds very similar. It's like 1950s New York, a man on a bar stool uh, meets a young woman. The guy was early married and soon divorced. Very similar to the other book. Um, Alfred Hayes was a playwright and screenwriter maybe? Maybe he wasn't a playwright, um, but screenwriter. And I just loved the way that he writes in the book that uh, of his, the first book that I read. So I was um, really keen to get to this one, especially after Pato mentioned it. That's, that's all I can say about it at this point. And for whatever reason, I felt like reading another Rachel Cusk, but I wasn't interested in essays because that's too... Oh, one essay could be so different than the other. I wasn't in the mood for that. And I actually wanted to read something a little like the Outline Trilogy, which for me really read like an autobiography, as a matter of fact, or a memoir. I kept forgetting that it wasn't. So I got this aftermath on marriage and separation. I think she wrote this in 2014 after she's, I mean, she's going through a, a separation and a divorce. 
I don't think I've ever read this one. I think I've read the other one after this, after she's uh, already uh, divorced. But so we'll see. A little short one. And I don't know why. I was just looking in fiction and I saw the name. I Actually, I was looking for a Margaret Drabble book, which I didn't really find one I wanted to read. And I happened to uh, land upon in the D's, Danielle Dutton, the new release that I just mentioned. What is it? Prairie Dresses Art and Something that I just mentioned in another video. She has a new release coming out. And I saw this oddly shaped book called Sprawl. And it says just when it appeared that suburbia was going to be strangled in its own entrails, a victim of peak oil, collapsing infra infrastructure and credit card debt, here comes Danielle Dutton to show us how magical that sprawl is after all. So it is a story about um, a, a woman in the suburbs. And this was written in 2010. And this book, with its flaps and its square shape, is done by Siglio Press in Los Angeles. And it's got very spaced apart prose. So I don't know. I haven't I haven't tried it yet, but I was just uh, in the mood. Okay, that's it. I don't know what I'll end up getting into, but I wanted to show you what I got since I wasn't able to right then and there after I got back from the library. Somebody was searching for a spot and saw me getting in the car and I'm certainly not going to sit there and talk when I know somebody wants a spot. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Please let me know about any of these authors that I just mentioned. Thanks for joining. I'll see you on the next one.